Hello, welcome back to Stockport Garrick Theatre. I'm Ian M. Butterfield. In this video, I'm going to try and give you an exclusive on next season's plays. Now, I happen to know that this room here is where the Plays and Castings Committee store all the scripts. So I'm going to try and break in and find out what we've got in store. Right, let's see. Oh, oh, what are you doing? Ah, uh, hello, Sandy. I'm, um, uh, well, I, I, I was trying to find out about next season's plays for the YouTube channel. Ian. Just have asked. They're here. Oh, right, okay. Would you like me to tell you what's on? Yes, please. Right, come on, let's go and see. Okay. <laughs> Stand on the stairs here. Right. Come on. Come and join me on the set of Ultra American Ian. So, before we get started into uh, the, the plays for next season, yeah. for, the, for the benefit of anybody who doesn't know who you are, <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about the Plays and Castings Committee? Yeah, I'm uh, Sandy McGregor. I've been a member here for hmm, more than half my life, shall we say. <laughs> and uh, I do a number of things at the Garrick, do a bit of lighting, a bit of directing, uh, a bit of acting, and also, as you, the reason I'm here is because I am secretary of the Plays and Casting Committee. Mm -hmm. Now, the job of the Plays and Casting Committee is to pick the plays that we do at the Garrick, mm -hmm. then to find directors for these plays, and then to cast them. Right. So it's a kind of, uh, it sounds very simple, but it's a quite a, a juggling job, and it is something that goes on right through the years, mm -hmm. right through the season. So, so what have you chosen for next what year? What have we chosen for next year? Uh, first play of the year in September is going to be Happy Jack. It's a, a John Godber play. Yep. John Godber uh, is apparently, or at the time of a statistic being recorded, was the third most performed playwright in the UK. I'm guessing Alan Akeball and William Shakespeare, the oh, other two. Oh, <laughs> well done, Ian, yeah. Yeah, I guess Godber would have been the, uh, the, the, the difficult one. Yeah. Uh, we've done a few Godbers in the past. Uh, if anyone saw September in the Rain, yep. which is our play that we came out of lockdown with, it's basically the same two characters. Oh, right. Who are based on uh, mm -hmm. Godber's parents. Right. So it's kind of the, their story as they kind of, uh, they go from uh, becoming a couple just when they start yeah. work right through to the end. To make it more interesting, the story is told backwards. Right. So yeah. it starts with them being old and then yeah. gets to them being young. Yeah. You know what to expect. You've got a bare stage, you've got two people who will quite possibly bounce in and out of character mm -hmm. and will tell you a story. And they're kind of the... Mm -hmm. I like these plays because they're they're quite warm-hearted and honest and not too demanding. Yeah. They'll, they'll make you laugh at times and they've also got sad bits and you get bits of recognition. So. Yeah. Okay, so what, what do we follow that? Then, then we go on to the Diary of Anne Frank. Right. Which uh, basically a dramatisation of the Diary of Anne Frank. Everything takes place uh, within the attic and just yeah. about the relationship between all the families mm -hmm. uh, there. Uh, the, the title character is writing a diary as she goes along, so yeah. extracts from the diary are there and you see things being acted out and her reaction to it. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to spoil the end. <laughs> I think actually probably most people know, yeah. know but it, mm. it's, it sounds a very depressing play. Why yeah. should people come and see it? Uh, because Anne doesn't get depressed by her situation. Mm. She makes a positive side of it and you know, the fact that the, the story and her character is still of interest, where are we, 80 years mm. nearly after yeah. the events described in it, it's still a story that inspires people. Mm -hmm. And that's presumably that's, the main stage. That's main stage, yeah. and uh, that one is in the end of October. End of October. October. Right. Do we have anything in the studio? Yes, we're then on to a studio. Our first studio of the year is going to be The Height of the Storm by Florian Zeller. Have you never you heard of Florian. either the play or the author? Okay, Florian, no shame. Florian Zeller wrote uh, The Father, which was made into a film last year with mm. 
Back to me. <laughs> Ironically, it's about people getting old and their memory. Jonathan Price. Yeah. It's about people getting old and the memory yeah. perhaps fading. Uh, it's quite a, a moving play, uh, quite thought provoking. Uh, you're you're never quite sure what's going on, mm-hmm. what's real, what's what's not real. Florian Zeller seems to be a quite a prolific playwright. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of plays out. Uh, and as part of place and casting, we read quite a lot of them, yeah. and we certainly found that this was the one which was uh, had the kind of uh, was the most interesting. Yeah, and it will be well suited to the the space where we're in here. Yeah, in the uh, in the studio, translated by Christopher Hampton, mm-hmm. who is a bit of a kind of a, it's a bit of a marker quality if he can be I was going to say I recognise the if, name yeah if he, you know if he's bothered to uh, yeah. translate your plays then you're yeah. you're obviously uh, someone of some heft now I can see the next one on the, the table next one on the list yes. yeah now, now this is this is my kind of genre <laughs> uh, Agatha yes, Christie we're on for Agatha Christie and Towards Zero do you know Towards Zero I don't know Towards Zero it's not it is one of her regular sleuths but not one of not Poirot and not no, Miss Marple is it because Poirot never appears on stage no. as I understand it yeah uh, so again we we read through quite a lot of Christie ones we've done quite a few Christie mm-hmm. ones here in the past they're always popular with audiences yes uh, and we recognise that so you know we're always keen that we'll yeah we, every few years we'll find find space to do an Agatha Christie audiences like them there's thing. a bit of escapism there's a, a bit yeah. of escapism and we're doing it at the start of December so uh, Christmas Christ, play Christie at Christmas yes uh, yeah. oh that's got to be bums on scene that one. Well, <laughs> yeah I mean it's uh, you know all, all the family enjoy uh, Agatha Christie yeah. I think so yeah. there we go so that's that one uh, then in the new year uh, we're doing a very new play called Get on the Machine by Steph Smith. Yes, th- this one intrigues me. I've yeah. heard a little bit about it. It's um, it, about uh, about computers taking over, isn't yes. it? Yes, yeah, AI taking over yeah. our life. Steph Smith wasn't a name that I knew, and it was someone who was on the committee who was intrigued enough by the mm. play to go and get a copy of it. Yeah. And... Uh, she said, oh, this is really good. Mm-hmm. And it went round the committee. And none of us came with any uh, preconceptions about it, but we all really enjoyed it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a good story. Mm-hmm. It develops properly and it will make you think. Yeah. Right, and we then go on to A Month of Sundays. Right. By Bob Larby. Now, Bob Larby is probably named to familiar to someone like you, Ian. I'm not sure, actually. Tell me about if it. I, if I said Bob Larby wrote uh, The Good Life and ah, Ever Decrease Ever Decrease. That, yes. That's yes. Yeah, yeah. that Bob Larby. Yeah. So uh, this is set in an old folks' home. Yeah. And there are two characters on there who probably shouldn't really be in there because they're a bit too... <laughs> they're a bit too savvy and wise yeah. to, be, to be knocking around in there and they're basically planning to escape. So, so comedy? Comedy, definitely yeah. comedy, yeah. And yeah, I've, uh, I found myself laughing out loud. Right after that, uh, yeah. we've got a bit of Shakespeare. Oh, we are going on for Measure for Measure. Right. Now, the Garrick's got quite a long tradition of doing Shakespeare mm. plays. Yeah, have you have you been in some I've, of them? I've been in one of them many, oh. many years ago. Yeah. Very Wise of Windsor. Oh, I remember that one. A yeah. role that I couldn't yeah. play these days because <laughs> he was called Slender. And, uh, <laughs> he, just and got... he was called Slender for a reason. <laughs> you just got to pick the rest of your cast. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so the, the Garrick has a, a long tradition of yeah. doing Shakespeare. We read it again as a group reading and it... It's quite, it's quite surprising because it's it's got some quite modern themes in mm. it. Uh, it's quite dark. It's kind of a bit of intrigue in it, and um, we we enjoyed reading it. And we thought, well, if we're going to do a, a Shakespeare, you know, we've been through uh, we've been through Midsummer Night's Dream, we had Hamlet, 
we found a director who was very, very keen right. uh, to direct it. Big uh, cast, though. Big cast. Uh, could be anywhere between 12 and 30, I think. True. Yeah, so, then we've got two more. Two more. Two more. Which are Frank McGuinness, There Came a Gypsy Riding. Is this studio or main this, we're, back, we're back in the studio. Right. So, uh, we're now on to April next year, so mm-hmm. we're almost 12 months of the day away from where we are now. Uh, Frank McGuinness, probably best known for writing Someone Who Watch Over Me. Yes. Uh, which was done many, many years ago. Yeah. Uh, this is just a kind of a slightly spooky family drama mm-hmm. uh, set in Donegal, mm-hmm. where there's been a, a slightly unexplained death a couple of years before, and the family return. And I don't want to say too much about yeah. it, but it's, no, yeah, no spoilers. Yeah, uh, it, it will be well suited to this quite intimate space. Yeah. Right. And then, really excited because we are finishing the season with Simon Stevens, Port. Which is now, the, Simon Stevens, he's um, an honorary member here? He is, yes, he is a playwright from Stockport, and Port is about Stockport. Yeah. It's set and based in Stockport. We had hoped at one point to do it for the 20th anniversary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, certain things have got in the way. Yes. So it will be the 21st yeah. anniversary. A coming of age. A coming of age. Ironically, what the play is yes. about is about people going through their teenage years and coming mm-hmm. of age in the, in the family. So that is going to be on, on the main stage at the end of May next year. Mm-hmm. Now, there are some pretty exciting things that are going to happen with that, which I can't reveal at the moment. Right. <laughs> There's a bit of a, an embargo on it. That is six main stage plays, three studio plays, and that's kind of my next 12 months are going to be uh, taken up amongst other things, but looking after that. So that looks a really interesting season. Yeah. So how would people get involved if they want to part in here? How do they find out what roles are available and how do they audition? Okay, right. The audition dates will be appearing on the uh, on the website. Right. We'll link down below for that. <laughs> and uh, the the auditions are open auditions, mm-hmm. so you don't need to be a member to come down. Right. Uh, on the website, it will certainly give you details about the uh, each of the roles in each of the plays, and it may or may not give you the audition pieces. <laughs> and the idea is you turn up on night and date. Of the audition. Uh, scripts will be available as well as the audition pieces and the character notes, anything like that. So you get the chance to prepare yourself and then uh, you'll be taken into room and given a chance to audition. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much for your time, Sandy. It's been really interesting to get that uh, look into what's yeah. going on next season. Good to see. I've just got one final question for you. That room downstairs. Yeah. Do you want to see what's in it? Yeah, please. Let's go. Okay, I'm surprised you've not been down here before, Ian. One of the uh, the hidden secrets of the garrick. There you go. Go in and have a look. Help yourself. Well, Ian won't be short of stuff to read in there. So, if you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, please click on the button below. And already on the YouTube channel is an interview with our chairman, Martin Pritchard. So, if you'd like to do that, please click on the button above. And I'm sure Ian will get back to you in the fullness of time once he works out how to get out. <laughs>